Ow! Ow. Alright, so. And so, um, good afternoon. Or evening or morning, or wherever you see it, if it has you are maybe a night owl or on the other side of the planet. Nothing actually runs at the same time anymore. I now work at night. I think I've mentioned this before in a previous video, but the point is that I work at night and I work at the bar. Here today. <laughs> now, as I work at a bar, I don't, I don't drink, so it's kind of people look at me weird because I work at a bar and I don't drink. But that's not that I'm a bartender, I'm actually a cook. Uh, I cook things for the bar. Um, I'm a bar back, so, you know, dishwashing poop. Um, while I do, while I do my life in, at night. Yeah, my life is mostly at night now. So, whenever I do have a day off, it's, I have no idea, because I haven't exactly met enough people in the area to actually have a social life, especially on Monday. Mm. Yep, it's Monday, it's already midday, and I really can't say I've done much about having a social life, but i just been doing chores here and there, everything we need to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, what else? And procrastinating, a lot of procrastinating, a lot of revival by sleep. Oh, so much sleep that I wish to be regaining! Now, uh, beyond that, beyond what I'm rambling about, um, oh yeah, beyond what I'm rambling about. Uh, at work, because, um, I work at night, plus it's, uh, at least 10 hours sometimes, 11 sometimes, maybe 12, whenever it's that kind of swamped and crazy. Um, yeah, that, sometimes I have time for myself, and as I have time for myself, I try to, you know, do what I have to do for work, but I do it in a relaxed, sort of meditative, meditative state, so that I can constantly repeat the same thing that I'm doing. <laughs> I'm living hair everywhere, buddy. As, um, uh, in my little meditative state, I get to ramble and think. It's like the same aspect when you're taking a shower, and then you think you can actually be, uh, you know, a singer or a, uh, you know, yeah, better dance moves. I don't know. Uh, point is that I basically ramble and think about how life, life that we have now, you know, your regular life as it is, there's two ways to tell this, well, no, three. Yeah, about a few ways of telling the same story. One of them being, you know, the exact facts, then you have the one that's over-exaggerating it, then you have the one that is just, you know, downplaying it, because you're trying to hide something, and then the last one, which is the most enjoyable, is to make, doesn't matter how the situation was, make it as emotionally, emotionally wrong compared to what it was. So that means you can make it as much hilarious, or as much morbid, depressed, whatever, even if it would be a great or bad situation. The point is that I like to take that last step. The last step right there, where I get to make everything sound more amazing than what it truly was. Why? Because I try to make it funny. And as I try to make it funny, it makes it memorable. And immediately when you make something so memorable, people will remember, like, I can't believe that happened to you. That's how life is more interesting. So basically, if you look back at all the most memorable things that people have said, you'll always remember the crazy stuff that comedians say because they have taken that fourth step of making it as hilarious as possible. It doesn't matter how good or bad the uh, situation was, it's there. One of the most interesting situations that I have had, which it kind of, I get reminded to from time to time because every now and then people say, tell me something about yourself. And then the moment people say that, I kind of think of the top craziest things or oddest things that I have, you know, blown out of proportion in a story because that is so memorable that it's memorable for everyone else. It's like, um, uh, someone asked me, are you a vegetarian or a vegan or wow, you're terrible. And I go with like, Ew. I do cook a lot of vegetarian stuff at home, but at work I do cook a lot of animals. I've eaten black bear and kangaroo, and then people are like, wait, you ate a kangaroo? It's like, yeah, I ate a kangaroo. And every now and then, uh, some story comes up, some story comes up, and then people always ask, of like, how could you even, you know, do that? It's because I always try to leave it so that it leaves it a cliffhanger, so I have to then answer and then, you know, explain it. Best way to tell a story. Make them remember it, make them question you. Until you actually give them the answer, then you follow up with another thing for them to question. 
it just you know follows up and they just keep on going and going. And the truth is that it's all true in the most awkward way possible. All right, story time. I once ran over a penguin. Now, it wasn't a real penguin. It was actually a flightless duck. So it was a flightless bird. So that was okay calling it a penguin. So it was, um, but the thing was that this flightless penguin. Uh, not sorry. So <laughs> this flightless duck. This flightless duck. Uh, two of them actually were walking across the road, and one decided to stay there and run back into traffic, and I accidentally hit it. So, I'm sorry, but I accidentally hit this type of flightless duck. In truth, later on, about a few hours later, uh, researching up of why did that duck not fly, found out that was actually a type of flightless duck that was native to the area I was living at the time, and it was a type of flightless duck that is extinct, that was been killed off over, like, 50, 60 years ago. So they killed off this extinct, you know, this duck. So it's clearly this flightless duck does not exist, and I ran it over. So I killed something that is extinct. So clearly I killed a dinosaur. So I think, you know, how many achievements have I unlocked out there? Right there, I've killed something that doesn't exist. You know, so yeah, achievement unlocked of how crazy it is. But yes, whenever I tell the story, I shout off as like, oh, it's like the time I ran over a penguin. The people were in shock. Like, how could you do that? Like, no, 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 it wasn't a big one. It was, it was a flightless duck. It's like, oh, well, that sucks. Yeah, it was supposed to be extinct. It's like, wait, how did you kill something that's extinct? You always leave them with a story for them to question so they can continue on to the next part. Then suddenly people remember the time that you told the story about, you know, running over a penguin. And they can actually use it as an anecdote of like, oh, yeah, I know this guy ran over a penguin. Mm. That's what makes it interesting. A good story. A good story always brings people to tell the story again. That, that is one way to, you know, make something unimaginable, you know, it's like, just spread everywhere. It's like the guy who ran over a penguin, even though it was an extinct flightless duck. And, um... Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just the rose curveball, the curve, that, that always helps out with, with, um, you know, you being memorable, and suddenly someone comes up and says, oh, you're that guy, with my brothers, my brothers always claim that I'm the pirate brother, because, well, yes, I used to do the historical part, with the looking like a pirate, just, in, uh, actually sailing in the 16th century ship, and so I've done all these things, and the thing was, because I was so mentioned as a pirate that whenever I first moved here and then I saw my brothers, they were interested, like, hey, there's my brother. Is that the pirate? And that's exactly how probably, I don't know, 40, 50 people have actually said immediately whenever I met them. Um, another thing too is that my parents actually wrote a book. Um, and in the back of the book where it talks about, you know, my parents, that are the, the writers, that are my parents, and, da -da 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 -da, and that they have their three sons. The chef, the bartender, and the pirate. Yeah. So that's how, that's how things are with me. Um, whenever you do something, you can always make it more interesting, especially how you present. You present things, you make things memorable so that people will then spread you like the plague of this one time that this happened. Yeah. And if you're questioning about the kangaroo, yes, I did eat the kangaroo, but it's not that I actually went to Australia. Someone that I know had a friend that bought a big old case of kangaroo steaks. They gave my friend the steaks, uh, some steaks, and they were not going to eat it because they felt so horrible about eating a kangaroo. And they know, hey, I know someone who will eat it, so they gave it to me. So I got the kangaroo steaks. Delicious. Nice beef flavor with a bit of a liver to it. Nice copperiness to it. It's, oh, it's so good. Oh, I love foods. I love animals. In every aspect. No, not every aspect. Just, just eating them, eating them, and yeah. All right, I'm digging myself a grave. But yeah, dang it! And I just made myself memorable as some weirdo that said something wrong at the end of this. Whatever. I've eaten a kangaroo. I've run over a penguin. And then there's one.